Hi everyone, I'm going to continue my series on miniatures between Grandmasters now with Alexander Morozovich against Luke Van Whaley, which was played in the Wiccan Sea tournament in 2002 and was a brilliant game from Morozovich, who is one of the strongest players in the world at the moment and he's very entertaining to watch because he likes to take risks and make things complicated and he's also widely regarded as the strongest blindfold player in the world so he's just all around a brilliant player and Luke Van Willey is a very strong Dutch GM when this game was played his rating was 2697 and Morozovic was 2742 so Morozovic was white and he started with e4 and came e6, d4, d5 to French defence, knight c3, d takes c4, knight takes c4, knight d7, bishop d3, knight gf6, and queen e2. And I want to just show you quickly now a trapping line that also happens in this variation of the French defence. If here knight takes c4, then bishop takes c4, and if black plays knight to f6, then bishop takes b7 can be played. Because after the black bishop recaptures, then queen b5 check, picks up the bishop, after queen d7, and queen takes b7. And also the initiative, because this rook is threatened now, so the pawn isn't going to be regained. And it's a good one to know for online play and that kind of thing. It's kind of rare for it to happen. Most people prefer not to take on e4 when they're playing the French, but it's still it's a good one to know. Anyway, in this game, c5 was played by Van Willey, and then came knight takes f6 check, and knight takes f6, d takes c5, bishop takes c5, and bishop d2, which is one of the two main lines in this particular variation of the French. There's also knight f3, black castles, and bishop g5, and they're both equally strong and equally popular. In uh, this line with bishop d2, white's intending to castle queenside and doesn't mind losing a pawn on the king side, which you'll see happens in a second because it open lines towards the uh, black king. So, black castled and white castled, and Van Wille played queen d5, which forks the a2 pawn and the g2 pawn. And it's, it's really um, just pawn grabbing in the opening, which is, uh, you know, notoriously a pretty dangerous thing to do especially with your queen because it's leaving your other pieces undeveloped and you should really just try to get a solid position before you try and win any kind of material better moves here with queen c7 or queen b6 so Morozovic played after queen d5 he played king b1 and then came queen takes g2 and this line was played in a good few games around about this time and uh, black got such poor results that it's more or less disappeared from top level play now and e5 is preferred just with better chances at equality better central control and freeing up this light square bishop so after queen takes g2 knight f3 black wins the second pawn with queen takes f2 and uh, he may as well take it because the queen is going to have to move soon anyway after one of the rooks come to the g file so Morozovic answered with queen e5, and then came knight d7. And if queen takes f3 here, then queen takes c5, and white has a dangerous bishop pair with an open board. Play might continue b6, queen g5, h6, queen h4, queen h5, queen g3, king h8, rook hg1, rook g8, rook df1. And White just has a decisive attack here, he's going to get his two pawns back with interest, so that's fine for him. So after knight d7, now Morozovic has to find a way to keep his attack going, because uh, he's slightly behind the material but he's ahead in development and that's much more important. And uh, he manages to find a way to do that by getting, uh, well first sacking a piece with the uh, bishop takes h7 and now to king h7 he gets to move his queen with tempo and just generate more threats and the bishop sacrifice really has to be accepted here after bishop takes h7 if say king h8 for example then queen g3 is strong and it would be unwise for van willy to exchange queens because it will result in an open h file which is going to be dangerous against the black king so say knight f6 
if king takes h7 here, then queen to h3 check is very strong after king g8, rook df1, queen e2, and knight g5. It's, uh, yeah, it's absolutely winning for white. So, after knight f6, queen h3, e5, attacking the queen, bishop to f5, with check from the queen, king g8, bishop to h6, will be a strong move here. If g takes h6, then rook hg1, and the queen would have to take in order to stop the mate. After knight takes g1, she takes f5, queen takes f5, it's better for white. So, after bishop takes f5, queen takes f5, e4, rook hg1, queen takes f3, and queen takes c5. Again, white retains a big advantage, a winning advantage in fact, with the resulting position. His attack here is very hard to meet, and his pieces are just much better placed than blacks. So, the sack really has to be accepted. And after king takes h7, there's queen h5 check, king g8, rook hg1, and bishop e3. Which isn't a good move, but it's already starting to look pretty bad for black. Other candidate moves were, say, knight f6, and then rook takes g7 check is very strong. After king takes g7, queen to h6 check, king g8, queen takes f6, bishop d4, queen g5 check, bishop g7, rook g1, and here the queen is forced to take. So after queen takes g1, queen takes g1, king h8, bishop b4, attacking the rook. White just gets massive initiative after rook d8, knight g5, and again, black has to do something about the fork on his king and his rook. So I'll say king g8 and knight e4. And white retains an advantage here. Despite having a queen against two rooks, he's, uh, his attack is still going strong, and he would win from this position. So, bishop e3 isn't good, but it's really the lesser of two evils. And Morozovic played bishop takes e3. And after queen takes e3 and rook g3, Van Whaley basically lost the move, or sorry, the game, by playing queen c5. <coughs> um, but it's more or less lost to him now, anyway. After queen c5, it's a force mate in four. But other moves uh, don't save the game either. For example, if he plays g6, then rook takes g6. It's very strong. After f takes g6, queen takes g6, check. King has to go to h8, knight g5. With uh, threats on h7, so knight f6. The knight to f7, check. Wins the exchange. Well, actually, no, it wins the game. Because after rook takes f7, rook d8, check. Rook f8, rook takes f8, check. Knight g8, queen takes g8, mate. So g6 is no good, instead of queen c5. And if uh, knight f6, then queen h4 is strong. Knight e4, knight g5. And here the queen would have to take the knight in order to stop the mate. So queen takes g5, rook takes g5, knight takes g5, queen takes g5. And again, white is better here. Fritz gives at least a small advantage to white. In, uh, in this position. So that too is no good, but what's really happening here is Van Whaley is suffering from going for that pawn in the opening. And I mean, look at these pieces, you know, they're on their starting squares. It's just crazy. And one other possibility was queen f4. But after rook dg1, rook d8, knight d2 is a strong move. King f8 really has to be played if g6. Then it's very bad for black after rook f3, queen d6, and it's made him 4. The rook takes g6, check, f takes g6, queen takes g6, check, king h8, and rook h3 is main. So king f8 is basically forced there. And rook f3, knight f6, queen to h8, check, king e7, queen takes d8, check, king takes d8, rook takes f4, king e7, rook takes g7. And white goes into the end game a clear exchange up and it's easily winning again. So anyway, in the game after Queen C5, Morozovic simply played Queen H6.
and it's well it's made in three now, it was made in four before. So it's all over. A brilliant game from Morozovic and very instructive in terms of what not to do in the opening. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.